You are now listening to Mr. Gentleman Lifestyle Podcast Season 4. Yes, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. At this time, I got my special guest. He is a motivational speaker. He is an entrepreneur. He got a he an author. He got many books out. We got Mr. Jonathan Harris in the building. Jonathan, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. How you feeling? I'm doing good, man. Welcome to my show. I know it's been a it's been a long while. I've been trying to get you on the show for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I finally got you on the show, man. <laughs> so Yeah, so happy to be here. All right, thanks, man. So um let's start this interview. So we're gonna start off with where are you from? So I'm from um Prince George's County, Maryland. Uh oh my gosh, I love Prince George's County. It's this truly what I call the home of black excellence. I'm from a city called Fort Washington which borders like Virginia and Washington, D.C. So I'm in like Southern Maryland. Uh, I was born and raised in Prince George's County. Uh, The reason I love it so much, and you'll hear most people from what we call PG County talk about it so highly is because it's over 80% African-American. And it's beautiful because, you know, growing up, I was surrounded by doctors, lawyers, business owners, educators, and just different Black people doing their thing. So I know that in the United States, we do not make up the majority, but growing up in BG County, you saw that. So I never saw myself as unable to do anything because my neighbors were out being engineers and, you know, computer specialists and doing just all of these great things. So, man, I have nothing but positive things to say about BG County. Nice, nice. That's amazing. That's amazing. So if you can't describe yourself in one word, what would that word be and why? Oh, wow. Um, I definitely say passionate. Um, I'm a person, I put my heart into everything I do. I've never been a person since I was pretty much a baby who faked much of anything. Like if I'm excited, you'll see it. If I'm irritated, you'll see it. If I don't like the idea, you'll see it. So it kind of forces you to just, you know, be that honest person and everything you do, do it from a place of passion. I'm definitely, when it comes to things I'm excited about, it's either a hundred or zero. I can't ever give you 47%. So, um, you know, I bring a sense of passion to whatever it is I'm doing. Nah, I definitely feel you. Cause I'm definitely the same way. I had to put, I gotta put passion in everything that I do as well. So I definitely feel you on that. So let's talk about your beginning of life. Like, how would you growing up? Hmm. So I would. This is always a funny question to uh, answer because I'm like thinking about like, wow, what was childhood like? I would say that, um, in some parts of me, I was very outspoken, and other parts of me, I was very shy. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I come from a family, especially uh, my grandfather was one of my biggest influences. But I remember something he always told me is that no opinion, or it was like any opinion worth having is worth defending. So I remember from an early age, like I couldn't just spill away. I had to be able to explain why I thought something. So my parents and my grandfather have always pushed like articulation on me. So from an early age, I've always had the gift of gab. I've never really been a person who was shy or nervous. Uh, when it came to speaking in front of large crowds or just talking. So uh, that part of me is very outspoken. I would sometimes be the kid in class who would stand up to the bully for the kids who wouldn't speak out. Uh, Or if all the kids had a problem with the teacher, I might be the person to address the teacher on behalf of the students. You know, sometimes that can get you in trouble. Uh, (laughs) But But then there's also that part of me that's a little bit reserved. I love alone time. Um, Mm -hmm. I've never really been one who needed to be around a bunch of people or things like that. I very much enjoy doing things by myself and kind of that, like, uh, what would you call it? Reclusive, introverted way, Uh, whether that's reading a book or going for a walk by myself or even taking myself out to dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoy stuff like that, too. Okay, nice, nice. Also, as a kid, what do you like? What stuff do you do? Like, like what stuff are like activities and stuff we need to do as a kid? Oh man, so I am a huge WWE fan even to this day. But I started being a, a wrestling fan when I was a kid. So pretty much Monday Night Raw, which comes on uh, Mondays from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. That is like my block out time. I'm not hanging with you. I'm not <laughs> going you. anywhere. I'm not. Don't call me. Like <laughs> but I, I feel that you on that. <laughs> I am a diehard wrestling fan. I've been to WrestleMania. Um, I've been to SummerSlam, and I've been to like a bunch of the local like Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown tapings. So I love, love, love it. And um, I'm, I'm the opposite. I like SmackDown. I'm, I'm more of a SmackDown guy. I've always been a fan mm. of um, <laughs> as a kid as well. And, and you know, 
not to get off topic a little bit, I'm gonna tell a story. I know when I was a kid, and we went to, I went to this spot called WDF New York. And I was, me and my sister were just there chilling one day. And they didn't know, well, somebody picked me up. And I'm like, I'm like who that picked me up? And he like, we're out the way, kid. And it turned out it was Al Snow. And it was like, wow. very, yeah, it was very rare. I didn't know it was, it happened so fast. <laughs> I remember it was Sunday Night Heat, and they were hosting Sunday Night Heat at the um at the event. I was like, oh wow, it was yeah. so fast, and that was like the first time I ever met a wrestler. I never went to a live event, or he wanted to go to a live event. But oh, yeah. you gotta try it, you got to. So that was in New York. That's where they had like that cafe or like that restaurant, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, I remember because yeah. they used to do Sunday Night Heat there, like you were saying, and they yeah, had yeah. tough enough uh, back in the day. But um, yeah. no, it's funny. The only wrestler, so I didn't meet him, but he did pass by me. So I don't know if you remember, Roman Reigns used to do his entrance, like the shield. They used to walk through the crowd yeah, yeah, um, yeah. when they first started. So uh, we had tickets to a show with me, my cousin, uh, my dad, and my uncle. And they walked right, like Roman Reigns walked right down the road. And I was on the edge. So I got to like like bump his arm. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, oh wow. That's that dope. That is dope. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> But but that let me get back on let me get back on track. Yeah. On, on topic. <laughs> but how everything that you did as a growing up made you the person that you are today. I would say that it definitely uh, taught me focus. Um, I'm a very a disciplined person. Anything that I'm serious about, I really stick to it. I commit my mind to it, and I really learned that from my dad. My dad is very big on routine and mm. stuff like that. So I'd say that I'm a very routine person when it comes to sticking to things, sticking to schedule, sticking to goals that I set for myself. So that kind of helps me. Um, I really have shifted away from what other people think of me and have shifted to what I think of myself as my motivating tool. Cause I realized as you get older, like you can't chase approval from other people. You got to take pride in yourself. You have to find yourself to be handsome. You have to find yourself to be smart. You can't wait from that validation and acceptance because that might cause you to do things that you're not even proud of just to get, you know, let's say clout or yeah. approval or things like that. So um, that's really what helped me stay focused is that I've always been like a different kind of kid. Like I've only owned maybe one or two pair of Jordans in my whole life. Um, I haven't really dated a whole lot of girls. I haven't really, you know what I'm saying? I don't like clubs. So, you know, some of my interests might be different growing up than like a typical teenager at the time. Or even, you know, when I was in my early 20s, some of the things that like 21 year olds and 22 year olds like to do, like when I was in college, um, I actually waited until I was 21 to have my first alcoholic drink. And people were like, what, you really waited? And, you know, a lot of times college people are freshmen, you know, 17, 18 years old. Um, and, you know, nothing wrong with that, no judgment. But I'm just saying that for me, um, some of my value systems were a little bit unconventional compared to people in my age. So I know in some places I definitely stood out like a sore thumb. But for me, I took pride in knowing that, like, this is my belief system. These are my values. These are my morals. And I'm going to stick to it, even if, like, it's not popular to be this way. You know what's crazy? I actually was 21 when I took my first drink as well. So that's, a, that's crazy. I, oh, definitely wow. could, I definitely could relate. Yeah, I definitely could relate to you. So that's that's definitely crazy. Yeah, everything you're saying that makes, that's definitely dope. Definitely dope, man. So I, as I said, mentioned in the beginning that you are an author. So what inspired you to become an author? So believe it or not, it was a complete accident. Um, I am definitely much more of a math and science nerd. I enjoy outdoorsy stuff and, you know, science experiments and whatever. Like I said, being an author was a, I won't call it a mistake, but I will say it wasn't a part of my life plan. Mm. Long story short, um, I ended up getting a flat tire. And when I put the car in the shop to get fixed, I filled out the maintenance form wrong. I put that I needed a tune-up. And, you know, tune-ups are really about fixing the wiring. It has nothing to do with tires. So I ended up paying $200 for a repair that I actually didn't need for the actual issue I put the car in the shop for. Yeah. As a result, what was only supposed to cost me $280, i am sorry, cost me $80, cost me $280. Oh, wow. So, you know, I was talking to my father and he was just like, well, how come you didn't like call if you had questions? And I'm, you know, at the time I was 24 and I'm thinking like, I didn't think that I needed your help. And you know, also too, it's that whole male pride of like, we think we know everything. Yeah, and yeah, we don't want to yeah, ask yeah, nobody yeah. for help. And I realized like it was such a stupid mistake to make because had I just called somebody who knew more about cars than I did, my dad would have told me, you don't need to check that off on the form that you need to tune up. And I would have saved $200. So after I got the car back, I remember saying to myself, like that's such a stupid mistake to make. But then I started to think about, well, what do other guys do who don't have a dad in their life or don't have any type of male role model to be there for them? And that's really how it started. Uh, my book is called Master Ceremony, oh, and I actually have it here, 
master of ceremonies a male's guide for a successful life and it's it's targeted towards young adult males you know obviously a book will never take the place of someone's dad or you know just male figure but it does cover a lot of things in here that guys might have questions about like there's a diagram on how to tie ties there's a couple recipes who uh for people who don't know how to cook there's information on budgeting for people who may not be good with money but then beyond just like those life skill things there are also um you know, paragraphs and uh, chapters that talk about real world things like how to improve your self-esteem, how to be in a healthy relationship, and more importantly, how to leave toxic friendships behind. Mm -hmm. um, I share a story about having to walk away from a 15 year friendship and all that went into that decision, but also understanding as a young man and just as a young person, uh, what type of people you need to be around in order to really be successful. So I think that the book does a good job of tackling like things that go on inside of your mental health, but also giving you like real world skills to know, like, you know, how to travel to an airport and all the different things you need to bring and stuff like that. So definitely proud of it. Nice, nice. It's funny because that wasn't that question, but you already answered it. You already answered it, but let me, <laughs> let, let us know where can we, can, can we get that book? I definitely get that book now. That, that book definitely sounds something I definitely will read. I appreciate it. So again, it's called Master of Ceremonies, A Male's Guide for Successful Life. I'll try to bring it a little closer to the screen. Um, it is available on pretty much all digital platforms from Barnes & Noble to Amazon, Books A Million. Also available on my personal website, authorjohn.com. Uh, I would be so sad if I did not mention these two as well. So in addition to my first book, I've also written two more. We have Grown Gents nice. and Girls With Pearls. I like to look at them as almost like my boy girl twins because they have almost identical concepts um but girls with pearls and growing gents are for you know younger children and it talks about just different things that uh we want and expect out of children like helping around the house um saying please and thank you being good with money so for example in the boys book you might see something like this where it says a gentleman saves his money and you see a kangaroo putting some money in his pocket uh, in his couch because we want to teach kids about financial literacy and the girls book has similar concepts to that as well um here's another example uh it says a lady walks with her head up so you see different animals uh with good posture because we want people to take pride in themselves and you know different things like that so um I, in addition to the first book the children's books are you know perfect gifts for baby showers, their birthdays, mm -hmm. graduations, and just things like that. Yeah, you're doing big things, man. And everybody, please I get Jonathan, it. please get Jonathan books, man. That's amazing. Get his book, support him. And we're going we to ask you how to get them at the end of the show. So we're going to... Okay. All right, so as an author, you know, what are three of the hardest things about being an author? Like, for, for, oh, those, that wanna, for those that want to um, be an author, like, what are the three hardest things that you Ooh, dealt with? Man. Okay, so the first one is that when you are an author, you are like 20 jobs in one, and no one really explained that to me, right? When you think of an author, you think of a person who just loves books and loves to write, and that's it. But it's a, it's a business. Yeah. Like, I think what I write is dope. And, you know, maybe my family does too, but that doesn't translate to people just automatically buying your book. So you have to really be a businessman or a businesswoman and get people to find value in what it is that you've written enough to make the sale. So um, I say all that to say, yes, I'm the writer, but I am also the graphic designer because I have to make the business cards. I'm the computer developer because I design my own website. I am the uh, wardrobe specialist because when I have appearances or talks, I have to put these outfits together. You are the hairstylist. You got it. You know what I'm saying? I am the um, the accountant because I have to set aside money to travel. If I have a book signing or a book talk, I am the uh, I'm the everything. I'm the promoter when it's time to you know be on someone's show or you know have a book signing or a book talk. You got to promote these things. So it's really like 80 jobs in one. Um, it would be nice if I could just sit home and write all day. That would be lovely. But the <laughs> truth is that there's many other elements that go into pushing a product. And I'm sure you can understand that as a show yeah, host, yeah. you know, yeah. it would be great if you could just do the recording, but there's so many other things that even make a show come together. 
Sure, so, yeah. you know, when you watch like the Grammys or the Oscars and you see like the celebrities thanking a long list of people and you're like, dang, that's a lot of people to thank. I used to think so until I wrote a book and I realized how like how much help I needed from how many different people. And I was like, oh, I get it why, you know, they got 20, 30 people to thank. So yeah. that would be the first hard thing. Um, the second thing, editing is definitely irritating. I'm not going <laughs> to hold you. Uh, after you've written a book, you're just happy for the world to see it. But, you know, you do have to go back, not even just from like a grammar standpoint, but from a does this make sense standpoint. Um, with my first book, for example, uh, one of the chapters is on family. So I talk a lot about my own personal experiences in the book. But when you're talking about personal experiences, you're also bringing other people into it because you're telling a story. So if I'm telling the story of me and or Ken and I, right, in order for me to talk, I'm also bringing Ken's name up. And that's something that was really important to think about is that in the midst of you trying to tell a story, you might be unintentionally or intentionally bad mouthing somebody else. So there was a there was a big part of like, how can I be truthful without being hurtful to somebody else? So you have to go back and write or should I say rewrite things. Uh, you also want to make sure that things are making sense. So you're just not rambling. Um, yeah. You know, every every book should have a goal. So with every sentence, every paragraph, the question that you have to ask yourself is like, how does this contribute to the objective you're trying to get your reader to get? And if it doesn't, it doesn't really need to be in the book. Mm. So editing can sometimes be a two, three, four, even five round process where you are so tired of reading that book, but you want to make sure it's really the best version of what you want to say. Uh, so that would definitely be the second thing. Mm. I would say the third thing and this is you know forgive me for those who may take offense to this but i like to be an honest person um the world just doesn't always place value on reading as a whole mm -hmm. so you have to be extra like on it to really get people to see value in it uh my book uh first book is a self-help book for young men most young men do not value self-help books so i had to early on learn that my target reader and my target buyer aren't the same thing. My target reader are young men. My target buyer are their mothers, their girlfriends, grandmamas, aunties, and things like that. Because in my experiences, um, usually it's the women in your family or the women in your life who want you to be better. So they yeah. will invest in this product for you to give it to you. So 90% of my purchases are from women, even though it is a men's book that they then gift to boyfriends, uh, husbands, father just you know different things like that so um you know sometimes as a writer you might feel a little bit discouraged because people just don't always flock to books yeah. you know if there's an audience of people who love to read then you're fine but i know for me i felt a little bit like did i just waste my time here <laughs> because <laughs> you know people aren't always kicking down the door to read a book um, I remember I was at a book signing and there was this teenager who was like, don't you think $16 is a little much for a book? And I was like, no. But again, I'm a person who likes to read. So I would yeah. be willing to make that investment. The average person, probably not, uh, who is of that age. So, you know, people will pay $300 for shoes. People will pay $80 for a video game or different things like that and won't think twice. But to some people, $16 is too much for a book. So you got to be very, very, very strong willed and what it is that you want to get across and really understand that everybody isn't going to love what you created. Um, so that would be my third tip that I would share. OK, nice. Good, good tips. Good tips. Good. I know people could definitely learn from these tips. Good tips, man. All right, and what advice do you have to do for like new, new authors or somebody that want to put a book out? Like what, what advice do you have for them? Oh, my goodness. The first thing, definitely get a business coach. Um, you can also get a writing coach too, which will be really helpful. You know, some people might feel comfortable enough they don't need the writing coach, but I would definitely tell you to get the business coach. Um, because again, there are so many things that you do not realize are a part of the process of making a book work. Like my first book is five years old and I've grown so much over that, but I've taken a lot of hits because of ignorance. I didn't know certain things that I should have known. Um, for example, Right. Like there are book awards out there and book awards help you become more credible. But book awards are usually only available within the year that your book came out. So you have like a short timeline to submit yourself for nominations or have somebody nominate you. And a lot of those things are paid. You got to pay to enter, to be considered, to possibly win. Like there's a lot of different things there. 
Um, same thing when I made all of my covers, I hired other people. So coming up with contracts, mm. you know, so that you don't get sued down the road or having somebody review your contract so that you're not shortchanging somebody else or being short shortchanged yourself. So again, there's a lot of business that goes into this world. And I was so ignorant to that. I was just, like I told you, the example I gave was about the car being messed up and me being yeah. excited to just share life skills with guys. That's how I entered into this world, just happy to share wisdom, not realizing that I was gonna be smacked in the, ba- the face with all of this business stuff. Like I remember being so ignorant to this man when they sent me like tax information. I'm like, what are y'all sending me this for? I don't like, mm-hmm. what? Because I have to pay taxes on the books that I've sold. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like there's so many like things I just wasn't even thinking about. And the average person is not thinking about most people write a book like I have a story I want to tell and that's their focus. Yeah. But it is it's not it's not that simple. Um you know, so I would definitely tell whoever is interested in getting started in the world of writing to get yourself a business coach so that that side of it can also be good too. Okay, amazing, amazing. So um, not so also you have a publishing company called J Harris LLC. Tell us about how that started. It got started. Sure. So I actually started that um, in 2020, February 2020, to be specific. Um, I wanted to take a little bit more creative control over my process. Uh, the first time for my first book, I went through um, a different self-publishing company, and they were great. But one thing I've realized is that um, there are companies who are very pricey. And a mm-hmm. lot of the things that they are charging you for, you actually can do yourself. So you might be paying $2,000 and you're, what you're paying $2,000 for is for your book to get printed, but they're gonna give you other things like business cards, maybe a blown up poster of your book or just some, some other kind of marketing things like that. What you realize is that if you kind of sit down and maybe go through a YouTube tutorial, you can cut out a lot of those costs and just do those things yourself. So over time, I learned how to design my own business card, design my own website, design my own posters. So what I really need your help for might only be $200, but I'm paying Mm. $2,000. So with my own publishing company, I had the ability to have more financial control and creative control over uh, what it is that I put out. Down the road, I actually want to help other people uh, write and create their own books as well. So I'm not quite there yet, but that is the long-term vision is to definitely step into the world of book coaching. Um, I feel like where I shine the best with that is helping people really present themselves in a positive light to secure more opportunities, whether that's show appearances, book talks, uh, book signings, getting books sold, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, similar to how when you sign a record contract uh, for a record label, you have a person who is like talent management like they teach you choreography they get you like a team of people to bring the star quality out of you um i would like to do that for people uh as new authors give them the opportunity to be better at public speaking practice like okay hey jonathan i have a show appearance coming up can you help me get ready for how to talk on a podcast or just different things like that so that's my long-term vision is not just helping people get their books out, but also giving them that uh, coaching and star quality. Okay, nice. And you're, you're, you're already doing amazing things. I know you're about to do even bigger things in the future. I'm looking forward thank to you. it. Keep doing your thing, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank also, you. also you you not only an author, you know, not only got a punch your company, but you're also a motivated speaker. Um, tell us how you got started with that. Tell us how you got started with that. Oh, wow. So the first, I guess the first time I ever gave a large speech was actually back in 2008. I was my high school valedictorian. Mm. So I think my first speech was delivered to several thousand people. Um, Like I said, I've never been nervous talking at any point in my life. I love to talk. If y'all haven't noticed yet, love it. (laughs) And, you know, for me, I just, I've always been like, I'm a person, I pretty much always feel comfortable wherever I go. I could just be meeting you for the first time and it'll almost feel like we've known each other 25 years that's true Um, so you know when it came to public speaking i've never really been afraid i've always said there are two things i've never been scared of that's a camera and a microphone Mm. so i you know even at work at school like if a boss or a teacher ever put me on the spot i was like the joke's on you because i'm always ready so we go you know what i'm saying like we're going to do this but for me um 
I really, I guess you would say professionally started doing the motivational speaking when the book yeah. first came out. Um, I wanted to not only just have the book, but go into churches, uh, mentoring programs, school systems and things like that and kind of teach, but yet talk from the book. So the thing I love about the book, there are 23 chapters in it. Um, I do presentations on almost any of the 23. Um, I talk to students a lot about personal branding. So I've done activities where I will ask them about their friendships and you know how they see themselves and how they think the world sees them. I've even had students text a bunch of people and say, I need you to text everybody that you know and ask them to give you three words to describe you. And then we talk about those words and mm. it's always interesting. The students are like, wow, I said, if you text everybody that you know, regardless of how long or how short you've known them or what capacity you know them, you'll realize that almost everyone will have the same impression of you pretty much. And I try to teach the students that it doesn't actually take long to really form an impression because my mom who has known me my whole life, my dad who's known me my whole life, and you who are, you know, you and I are just talking on the uh, call now, will probably have the same impression even though I've known my parents way longer. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you and so I always talk to the students about like you'd be surprised how quick it is to pick up on something about a person and how you should be intentional about how you interact with them. So, you know, students love stuff like that. We've been able to have some really important conversations about like how to choose your friends, how to walk away from toxic friendships, um, you know, just just different things like that. So I really enjoy it. Um, I would say I like workshops better than like speeches. Because with workshops, you have a chance for everybody to give input, not just you yeah. talking to them for like a 30 minutes or an hour, but instead like everybody feels a part of the discussion. And I consider myself to be a lifelong student. So even though, yes, you brought me in to teach you, I'm happy to learn from you too. Yeah, so exactly. when yeah. we're all, you know, we're all talking together. I feel like we all walk away with something. Yeah, I definitely agree. And that's amazing, man. That's amazing. Thank you. So so I know you, you, you won many awards, and you've done many things. So let me know which was your biggest achievement award-wise and like uh, like, a, 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 like a, in the stage-wise. Hmm. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, I would say my greatest accomplishment in life actually is a personal achievement. Um, so for those who, for those of you who follow me on social media, uh, my username is Author John, by the way. Um, I lost 120 pounds. Mm. So I did that between July 2019 and I've been, you know, maintaining it to date. I walk anywhere between two and five miles every day, pretty much, unless it's like really rainy or snowy or something like that. But um, for me, it was a lot of work and I was really proud to see that not only was I able to lose over 100 pounds, that, but even a year later, I've been able to maintain what it is that I've done. So that would probably be my greatest personal accomplishment. I would say professionally, um, probably writing the book, honestly, or writing the books. Um, I didn't realize how much went into it and I didn't realize how much I would change after doing it. You know, writing a book gives you so much more of a tougher skin. Um, there was a part of me that at first, when, you know, things didn't work out, I would take it very hard and all of that. But, you know, once you put a book out, like you hear so many no's and so many things that you thought were going to work out for you that didn't. I don't have a defeated mindset. It's more of a, all right, we'll get them the next time or we'll, you know, invest our attention into something else. So it really has made me like a tougher person. It has made me more mindful of how I present myself into the world because I have like kids that follow me because mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I went to their school to talk to them. And that's just so powerful. Like, you know, if we're in the same age bracket and we're being funny amongst each other, there is no harm, no foul. But when you have like a 13 year old who's watching your page and they tell you how much they look up to you, you just, I feel like I would feel 30 times worse if I was like on social media acting up or doing something crazy. Yeah. And granted, you know, it's my page. I could do what I want at the end of the day. But I realized like I have a platform. So, you know, being an author is really what helped establish me. And then I work at a college too. So a lot of my students follow me and they follow the journey of the weight loss, the books, and all of these different things. So, you know, being an author is what really kind of uh, set me up for that. You got to do better with your own life because there's so many people who are looking to your example. They're counting on you and, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, once again, congrats on all of the accomplishments you made, man. Thank You're losing you. 100 pounds. That's, that's amazing. That's wow. That's amazing, man. Keep doing it, man. Keep doing your thing. So, so we're going to switch gears a little bit. And as you know, we are in a pandemic. We are still in a pandemic, even though it's th things get a lot more better. 
So I want to know, know how did the pandemic affect you and what did you learn from the pandemic? Okay, good question. Um, for me, it it did a lot of different things. Um, it really helped me slow down a little bit. Um, I'm very much so like a routine and schedule person. I always got something to do, always got somewhere to be, always got somebody I'm about to go talk to. And, you know, for the first time in my life, like my day was not revolving around appointments. I was able to really just like sit outside and stare at things without having to run and go do something. Um, I was able to have conversations with people and not feel like I had to go rush and get off the phone for this next meeting or this next something. And I think for the first time in a long time, my life wasn't built around a to-do list. Mm -hmm. I was able to really just value human relationships and be intentional about those conversations. Like uh, at my college, you know, the custodian who works in the building that I also work in, we were able to have like a really good conversation and we were able to just talk for the first time. Like I wasn't off running to about to go do something. He wasn't running off to go do something. And we both found out that we had so much in common with each other. Mm -hmm. And it was just crazy because I'm like, dang, we pass each other every day and this, 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 this is going on. But now we're finally able to really talk to each other. And we found out we both love PlayStation. We both love wrestling and mm -hmm. all of that. So I'm grateful for the pandemic for its opportunity for us to just like really value relationships more intentionally yeah um instead of like and you know like for people who have busy schedules it's not you know purposeful that we don't want to talk it's just like we have other stuff that we're trying to work on too yeah but i was grateful to have opportunities to just not have to rush off the phone real quick um in terms of my productivity though in the same breath it did help with a lot of personal projects i have two to-do lists i have things that like i actually have to do like within a week's time and then I have things, if you ever got free time, these are some like other projects you can work on. So I was finally able to dig into that other project vault and really just work on those things. So I was yeah. able to pump those other two books out. Um, I was able to plan an event with my politician on mental health. I was able to uh, plan, I planned an all men's conference last year with the help of some of my uh, former students and some of my friends and my nice, cousins. Nice, nice. Uh, we did a conference called Destination Success completely free for everyone, uh, a virtual conference for men over the course of um, four Saturdays in June. So I was able to just get a lot of stuff off the ground that I've always kind of wanted to try. And um, I'm grateful for it. I am sad for the, you know, families and people who lost loved ones or the people who lost their lives. Yeah. Um, but I do hope that just as a society, we, as we kind of walk out of the pandemic, I hope that we remember what we learn from it and don't just go back to 2019 kind of lifestyle. So. And I agree. Um, it did help me to do a lot more things that I've been wanting to do for a while, but also, of course, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff as well. But but of course, but I guess yeah. glad we all getting better and stuff like that. So also, how do you feel about the pandemic today? Like, do you think like things got, got a lot better since 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 when we was last year? Um, in some areas, yes, in other areas, no. I think it's great that people are socializing more and things like that because, you know, that's just an a, a important part of human function and civilization. I say no in some areas because uh, we have to still kind of address the safety aspect of like some of our workers. I think that we should have definitely, as a society, uh, given hazard pay to certain industries that maybe weren't considered for hazard pay but still had to go into work like there were a set of people who had to still go through their regular work didn't get hazard pay and then others you know were given the opportunity to work remotely so um you know for those who essentially did put their lives a little bit more at risk but didn't receive the compensation for it mm -hmm. um because they were deemed essential workers I'm sure that that, you know, probably leaves a chip on their shoulder. So I think just us being more mindful of compensation and stuff like that. I would say too, with work schedules, I know some companies are going back to like full-time work permanently, like back yeah. at the site, but it's already been proven that a lot of these jobs can be done from home. Exactly, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm just a little bit curious as to like, if your company didn't see a decrease in productivity, during time at home, why make everybody come back? Is it for like yeah. a micromanager type of thing? Is it for team building or like what is the intent behind making everybody come back? So 
Um, that's why I would say in that area, we haven't really seemed to have grown in all industries quite yet. Mm, okay, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. But let's switch, let's go back to brighter. No, let's get back to more positive things. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, what is your dream venture? Something that you always want to do? Oh wow, y'all are gonna laugh when y'all hear this. Well, I, I'm not gonna say y'all not gonna laugh, but it is gonna catch a couple of you by surprise. So, I would love, love, love to be a brand ambassador for Quick Brew. Mm. So I am a huge oatmeal fan. You know, earlier um, I talked about how I lost weight. Oatmeal was one of the top reasons that I did. Uh, For those of you who aren't familiar with the health benefits of oatmeal, not only is it good for your skin, it is great for your digestive system. Mm. Um, It makes you feel full, but it's very low calorie in the same breath. So you're going to have almost like a fullness, like you had a pancake breakfast, but only, you know, two or 300 calories uh, with oatmeal. And it just, it does a lot of great things for you. I eat oatmeal sometimes, oh, some weeks, seven days a week. Mm. And, um, you know, it's gotten so funny to the point that like people will message me on Instagram or Facebook or they'll text me uh, a picture of their oatmeal that they're eating for breakfast. And I was just like, I laugh that amongst my social media village, I have been connected as like the oatmeal guy. <laughs> point where people like people send me their breakfast to show me that they are also eating oatmeal in support of the fact that they know that I eat oatmeal. I was like, yo, that's like real influence. Like I was kind of proud of that. Like that's dope. <laughs> but I say all that to say, um, because I have lost, you know, so much weight and oatmeal played such a great role and I do support them all the time. I always carry like anywhere between two to three jars of oatmeal in my uh, apartment at all times. I would love to represent them. I don't feel like they have um, a lot of black representation to my knowledge. And on top of that, I would love to kind of travel and talk to people about healthier practices, but like real healthy practices. Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, I weighed 340 pounds when I started at the top of my health journey. And now I'm in the 220s. Oh, wow. So I say all that to say like, and that's not to knock like personal trainers and doctors or anything, because I think everybody is wonderful at what they do. I think the one thing that helps separate me when I talk to people about health journeys is that I actually was on the other side of it. You know, if you've never been fat, you can talk to people about how you maintain weight, but yeah. losing a lot of weight is just something that you can't relate to. It doesn't mean that because you weren't big, you can't support somebody. I want to be clear about that. But what I'm saying is that I've actually been like obese, right? You know, when you, based on your height and your weight, you get either obese, you're overweight, your normal weight, yeah. you're underweight, right? Yeah, so yeah. like I've lived the life of, a, of an obese person. I know what it feels like to sit in an airplane seat and barely be able to get into the seat or maybe not be able to get on certain roller coaster rides because the feet is too small for your waist. There's just different things that when the average person is trying to lose weight, um, they want somebody who really understands where they've been. And that's what I feel like I'm gonna bring to the table, you know, as a brand ambassador, or I mean, Quaker Oats or any health company or anything like that that I'm doing, I can talk to you now from both perspectives. Yeah. I've been on that side, I'm currently on this side, um, I get it. You know, I understand some of the reasons that you might start it, start working out, start your health journey and then stop along the way. I, I, you know, I understand how you feel when you go to the store and there's something that you really, really like, but it don't fit you. Mm. I understand how you see something that you really like and the biggest size they have and what you want is a large. You wear 2X or 3X or 4X or whatever. So, um, you know, being that brand ambassador for Quaker Oats wouldn't just be like, you know, for financial payoff purposes, it's really for the purpose of using a platform that is way bigger than me, which is Quaker Oats, to talk to people about just like better self-care practices and how, you know, starting your day off with a good breakfast really would be able to do that for you. Yeah, and, you know, this video snippet. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, and you know, anything possible, you know, go for it, go for it, do it, man. Yeah. Anything possible, man. And oh, yeah, I'm definitely securing that contract. Definitely yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. I'd definitely do it. I, I, I would be a brand ambassador for Nintendo because I've always been a big fan of Nintendo and stuff oh, like wow. that. Oh, wow. What's your favorite um, Nintendo game? Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, right now, I'm Zelda, Zelda is one of them. Of course, Mario, Pokemon, Smash Brothers, stuff like that. Well, who's t- your favorite Smash Brothers character? Oh, that's hard. Um, let's see, if it, um, probably Mario, um, Banjo Kazooie. Um, 
Trying to think, trying to think. It's, it's a, it's, I got a lot. It's a couple. It's a couple of people. Um, <laughs> it's a couple of people, man. Mega Man. Mm, so just I got y'all with um, either Peach or Pikachu. Those mine. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And you know, we're gonna talk more about the video games section a little later, but okay. but what other project? What other project you got going on that you have not mentioned yet? So um, I've talked a lot about the health journey, right? Um, down the road, and by down the road, I mean like very soon, I will be releasing my fourth book. That's exciting nice. to say. And um, it will actually be a health book. So I'll be talking about how I lost the weight. Um, nice, I'll be nice. calling it Journey to 100. And I'm just really excited to be able to share, like I said, real world tips from a real world guy who experienced some real world things. Nice, so nice. I definitely hope that you all support. It's a not a long read at all because no one wants to sit down and read 300 pages on how to lose weight. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like it's very it's very to the point, but it gives you real world strategies. It talks about accountability buddies. I have activities in there and different like uh, questions and self reflective things that you can do to really get you um, focused and get you a positive mindset to want to do this. Okay, nice and amazing. And we're looking forward to that book. We're definitely looking forward to that book. Right, and what do you have to say for anybody going to say about you, like, like you know, from the an author and everything? Say something inf- inspirational. Oh wow. Okay, let me make sure I understand the question. So you're you're asking me what would I say to anybody who's listening right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Whew. All right. I want everybody to pick the word finally out of your vocabulary. Why do I say finally? So finally represents something that you felt should have already happened in your life, but Mm. just recently happened. And when you say things like finally, um, you're forgetting that everything in your life is supposed to happen when it's supposed to. From when you get married to, or better yet, if you get married, children, um, degrees, buying a home, um, you know, getting your business off the ground. A lot of times, sadness and disappointment stem from uh, unfulfilled expectations. So let's say you have an expectation that you're going to do something by a certain age, then that age happens and it doesn't take place yet. You feel like you failed. You can't fail yet. Everything that's supposed to happen for you, you're on time for. So if you haven't found that special someone, you're not late, you did not miss the boat or the bus. It's coming. But when you say they're finally here, it's not a finally. They came when they were supposed to. They came when you were ready to receive them and you know, you were able to maintain that blessing. There are a lot of people who get opportunities and they lose opportunities because they're not ready. So if your business takes five years to get off the ground, you didn't finally start a business. You started a business when you were ready to do so. Yeah. So that would really be my advice. Is please don't say finally for anything. You didn't finally go to school. You didn't finally buy a house. You didn't finally get married. You didn't finally do anything. You did it in its proper time in your life. Don't compare yourself to people in your age bracket or your family. And you're like, well, my older sister did this at 25. So I got to do it at 25. No, you don't. Um, you don't have to do anything. You know, my dad bought his first house at like 20 years old. But he also was able to do so because it was a different generation when things were a lot cheaper. I'm way older than 20 and I don't own a home yet. But in its proper time, it's going to happen for me. And I'm okay with that. Whenever that is, that could be next week or two years or 20 years. But it won't be a finally. I didn't finally get a house. I got a house and I was supposed to have it. So that will really be my advice to everybody is please don't put yourself on this, this invisible timeline because all it is going to do is lead to disappointment for you. Instead, take every day as it comes and do your best until your blessing shows up. Yeah, amazing, amazing tips, amazing tips. Cause I, know I definitely needed that as well. I definitely needed that as well. All right, so before we go, we're gonna play a little game called Five Random right. Topics. <laughs> well, actually five topics, and you can give me a, a long or, or short, which short, well, you can give me a long response on everything, on everything that I ask you. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm ready. All right. All right. So what is your favorite era of music? Oh, gosh. Um, 90s and early 2000s R&B makes up pretty much 90% of my uh, playlist in my home. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. That's one of my favorite era. And also the um, Motown days as well. 
You want to yeah. take it like, all the way there. You want to take it all the way back. All right. What is your favorite go-to movie to watch? Oh, um, I love Freedom Writers. Mm. Freedom Writers is so dope. Uh, if you've never seen it, it's about the education system in California or at least one specific school. Please go check it out. It's a must-see. Um, I love Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat mm. is dope. Um, the new one was not bad. I, th- I feel like the world gave it a hard, a hard time, but y'all, y'all go see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, it was, it was, it was cool. <laughs> yeah. So that, those are probably those are probably be my two. Nice, nice. You know that free ride is dope. I didn't watch Freedom Ride. I didn't watch both of them and Mortal Kombat as well. You know, I, I like both yeah. of them. All right, now here come we go back to we go back to the wrestling. Who are your five favorite wrestlers? Okay, let's see if we can do this. All right, so boom, we got Shawn Michaels, mm. our great kid. Um, for Stratus, mm, I definitely. would say, whew, okay, favorite wrestlers. Um, this one is going to be very uh, unpopular amongst many who see this, but I am a huge Tamina fan. Love Tamina. Mm, wow. Um, I don't know if he's a favorite, but I have a great deal of respect for Dolph Ziggler. Um, mm. I think that he is incredible. Um, and last. I would say I've always enjoyed um, mm, well he's like a newer wrestler but uh, the WWE at least uh, Ricochet mm, nice 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 so that, I know would, for, that would be my time I know for me The Rock of course that's always been one of my favorite Kurt Angle um, mm, yeah. Trish Stratus i always been a Trish Stratus friend and I have to go current right, Roman Reigns and um okay <laughs> and um who else and um somebody else and um and drew drew mcintyre okay okay yeah go good, good, good line up there <laughs> and, and 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 i i mean i had bobby last year as well at the six bonus because i like bobby Lashley. that's my guy bobby i'm I, still mad they broke up the hurt business but we'll uh, talk yeah. about that on another episode oh <laughs> uh, you know yeah you know you're not the only one i'm gonna say about that too you were not the one here. yeah we definitely gotta do another episode about that we definitely gotta do another episode yes. about that all right what is your first video game system and what is your favorite game out right now oh okay so first video game system that i remember Ooh, i can't remember which came first i think my first game system was the sake of saturn mm. Okay, but I can't remember if the Nintendo 64 came first or after. Mm. But um, definitely between those two. Um, favorite game that's out right now. I play a lot of wrestling. Uh, I did not get the WWE Battleground, which is more of like the cartoonish yeah. animated one. I still play yeah. WWE. I guess that would have been 2K20, uh, which is really dope getting ready for WWE 2K22. And when I'm not playing anything wrestling related, um, I'm definitely playing Madden. Uh, last year, man, I was running ships in Madden. I was top 6% in all the online. I was hurting anybody who stood in my path. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Those are, those are my games. Um, I know for me, Sega Genesis, first first mm. game I had was Sonic 2. I remember that. Oh, I had Sonic, Sonic 2 with it. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite game out right now, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. Okay. And, yeah, and I'm gonna ask you a bonus question. Um, do you watch AEW? Do you watch AEW? You know what? I have not yet. I only kind of like hear about it and follow it via like Dirt Sheets or like Twitter, Instagram, stuff like that. But I cannot say I sat down and watched the full episode yet. Nothing against it. Um, I guess I just need to kind of carve out some time. I know many of the people who are on AEW, AEW are like former WWE talent, so I'm sure I'd yeah. be. You know, glad to see them and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I watch every here and there. I mean, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I mean, I feel like everybody overhyped it too much for me. That just, I just, that just yeah. me. But, but I mean, I watch <laughs> every here and there. I watch, I watch every here and there. And the last question: Which celebrity would you like to meet? Um, just name three. Oh goodness. Okay, so I've already met her twice, but she'll always be on the list because I can never not meet her enough time like i can never meet her enough time like so r&b singer maya is my like oh nice, top, nice probably top two or three favorite people in the whole wide world that's a whole nother episode in itself <laughs> um but <laughs> uh so definitely okay let's see uh i would definitely say a marie would be dope mm. uh, another uh you know 2000s r&b singer and 
Hmm. Probably a, a wrestler would be great. I don't know if I have a specific one. Maybe Shawn Michaels would be great. Mm. Uh, it'd be cool to pick his brain, hang out with him, maybe get a wrestling training in or something like that. That'd be dope. Nice. I know for me, that may be Dwayne Johnson, of course, The Rock, of course. Um, yes. Barack, Barack Obama. And, um, Definitely a good one. And one of my favorite artists, he very underrated, Ryan Leslie. Yo. Yo, that's so crazy that you would say that Ryan Leslie is one of my favorite people. I've oh, wow. almost seen every, yes, I've almost seen like every single Ryan Leslie like YouTube interview ever. <laughs> and his, if you've ever noticed, his interviews are like very lengthy. He like really goes into things into great detail. I will sit there and watch for a whole hour and a half. Like mm-hmm. love him, very smart. Addiction is one of my favorite songs. Um, and then also one of his, um, I guess independent albums, uh, Only the Lonely. Um, yeah, history, yeah, yeah. dope track. So it's so funny because, like, you know, I work at a college and my students are, some of them are like 10, 12 years younger than me. So I say, Ryan Leslie, they're like, ooh, I get so angry. I'm like, uh, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, but nah, that's so dope. If you've never seen this, please go to YouTube. There is this video. It's called Ryan Leslie Makes Addiction. And it's oh, I know about that. I'm, oh, I'm about God. that. I'm about that. Yo, 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 crazy. It is literally like, I'm. I've seen it too many times. Like I already know, like order for order, what it's gonna be. For real. But truly, one of the best videos, like music composition wise. Um, I definitely wish that he had saw more fame in the public eye. I agree. Um, but you know, I guess everything works out the way it's supposed to. I agree, man. He that dude is amazing. Guy, amazing. He got, he got talent, man. I, but that one person I would wish I could definitely interview, man. That's one person I wish I could bring in the show. But hopefully, yeah. hopefully in the future we could do that. But you ain't you know, no Jonathan. You know, he has a super phone, right? Yeah. I was oh, going to yeah, say, yeah, definitely, yeah. you would definitely text him. I don't know if he's going to hit you back right away, but, like, I've texted him a couple times. He's, like, puts his number out there and everything, so. Uh, no, yeah, I got, no, I, got, I, got, I got the number. I got the number. I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta text him. I got to text him one day. But, you know, Jonathan, thank you for coming to the show. It's been, it been amazing thank to talk you. to you, man. And, you know, you're doing big things. Keep doing your thing. And you're doing an amazing thing, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and, and you already know, I'm driving your social media and everything that you do, you know, and your your book, your book and everything where everybody can reach you and everybody can get your book and stuff like that. Drop it all cool, down cool. now. All right. So again, I'm Jonathan. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, again, I have three books out currently, Master of Ceremonies, Growing Gent, and Girls with Pearls, all available on my website, which is www.authorjohn.com. That's A-U-T. H-O-R-J-O-N. That is also my social media name for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, um, Clubhouse, and YouTube, plus the PlayStation Network. All Author John. So A-U-T-H-O-R-J-O-N. All right. Thank you. Then, Jonathan, we'll be right back. You are now listening to Mr. Gentleman, Lifestyle Podcast Season 4. Cheers!